OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network Hello, everyone. Again, I'm Will Nederson. Uh, the uh, counterpart of me is Laura Flores Miranda, who's not with me today. Uh, you'll hear about barriers, and I'll uh, explain why Laura is not here, but she has uh, taken another job to support herself and just couldn't make it for this session today, but has been very active with me in our, our midterm project. So just to make sure that Laura is present in the words that are here and the the slide itself. So let's see if I, there we go. So Tustin Adult School is located in Orange County, California. Uh, Orange County is this small county, but has uh, quite a, a different range in um, who we serve throughout Orange County. Uh, we're part of the South Orange County uh, Regional Consortium. So we're the lower half of Orange County. Our surrounding cities are the city of Irvine and Santa Ana. Um, to our north is unincorporated Santa Ana, as well as Orange, the city of Orange itself. So Tustin Unified is the school district we are part of. It's a K-12 district or TK-12 district that services roughly right now about 24,000 students um, um, district-wide. When looking at our makeup for Tustin Adult School, we currently have active for this school year uh, 458 students. Um, I, I give last year's numbers just a comparison, though. We are seeing a definite drop in this year's enrollment. Last year, we had about uh, 1,239 students. So it, it's uh, pretty significant, and we've been fighting to have students come back onto campus or online as well. Uh, Tustin Unified did open back up in September. We, for the fall semester, um, did not open back up in person. We had um, all of our classes online. And then the spring semester, we attempted to open um, some in-person classes in the evening. Uh, and even with that, the numbers are much lower. I can give you a total number for all in-person classes that we currently have. There's about a total of 28 students that are attending. So we had to clap some classes and things like that. But with that makeup of who we are for this year, our ESL population is at 262. Um, our citizenship preparation is at 27. Our ABE um, is at 21 students with a combination of a focus in uh, reading, writing, and then in mathematics as well. And then our uh, diploma and equivalency program is about 159. I think for this year, that's been a number we've seen increase or grow compared to our ESL, which has typically been our largest component of our school, making up om almost 75% um, of our population, definitely a shift for this year. Uh, age range of our students is 18 to 81, and we're pretty proud of that 81-year-old as she is taking the online learning and, and running with it. I don't have an image of her here, um, but it, it's been pretty amazing to watch her try and work when I've been in the classes observing. Uh, there are 12 various languages besides English that are spoken at home. Images on the side are all, again, pre-pandemic, except for the one in the bottom corner of the gentleman, Omar, carrying his American flag. That was right after he passed his citizenship test in November. So very proud and sharing it with this teacher. But we um, had to uh, have a... Uh, special outdoor one-on-one -on -one, uh, diploma celebration and virtual celebration for graduation. So that was our uh, way of being able to have graduates celebrate if you see the image of the graduate there. And so with that, let's talk about the makeup of our school of teachers. So we have 25 part-time teachers. Uh, again, I, as I shared, we have ESL, ABE, and then um, our uh, adult secondary education. We prior to COVID had some basic computer classes, but those had to stop because we didn't ha have access to the lab. So um, it's just those four strong, I mean, three strong areas that we currently are offering. Our classes are mornings. Um, I, I, we separated Fridays just um, out because it's a special group, but mornings from nine to noon, uh, we've had some afternoon, our ABE classes, those parents have shared with us, they would prefer to come in from two to five or, or be online from two to five. And then our evening classes from six to 9 p.m. And then uh, with our in-person classes starting back up in um, uh, spring, 
we have a Saturday multi-level ESL class that is going on. So that is the makeup of our teachers and just the image is one of our department meetings of some of our ESL teachers. So the DLAC team is Laura Flores Miranda. She's considered our lead. Um, she is the instructional coach for our school as of January, 2021. That was a new shift in trying to look at um, support for uh, technology integration, as well as we're a new school to WIOA, uh, bringing uh, co-ops into play as well. So Laura's role has shifted. Prior to that, she was for five years our uh, lead ESL teacher. Um, she was the the one who suggested, "Hey, let's apply." And uh, the, I said, "All right, let's go for it." So with that, I'm the other part of the the team. I joined Tustin Adult School and. Um, the 1819 school year. So this is about my third year in adult education. And then those not present with us when we meet in DLAC meetings, but who've been present in trying to create our distance learning plan and really trying to think of our steps forward has been a support from our school leadership of Virginia Burroughs, who took over the ESL lead teacher position from Laura, and then Stacy Sevkick, who is a counselor and our lead um, uh, ASC. ASE teacher as well. So they are in the background, no images of them, but definitely a part of uh, the work that we've been doing. So uh, th this quote stands uh, to sort of start where we were with applying for DLAC. You know, change begins at the end of your comfort zone. So change when you're really comfortable or think you're doing well. Again, we were seeing growth prior to the pandemic. Um, in the 17-18 school year, we had almost 1,800 students that we were servicing, so we're pretty proud of that growth, knowing that four years earlier, uh, we were just rebuilding from um, flex flexibility and all those components. So there was a comfort zone saying, hey, we're doing well, we see some growth in our assessments, we're pretty comfortable, but you know, it really, to look at change and the, the need for things, you, you've got to go past that comfort zone. So with that, there was a nudge towards change. So when we applied for DLAC, it really was to look at the integration of digital literacy skills into our teacher's instruction. Um, we, uh, in, again, ESL being our core, majority of that was paper pencil in the classroom. Um, we, uh, our paper pencil CASAS test school have not done e-testing, so it really was, our students didn't have access to a lot of devices. I bought our first iPad cart when I came on as an administrator, but I'll be honest, it sat for about two months because teachers uh, were nervous about it and students, when they were brought out, weren't sure about it as well. So we really, the conversation was, how do we integrate these digital literacy skills into instruction to make it feel comfortable? So the classrooms themselves, tech being used before this was just a document camera and a projector and a laptop to help if they needed for uh, um, running our uh, student management system ASAP, but that was the basics of what we were doing. Textbooks were all hard copies. They weren't, um, uh, there wasn't a digital format of that, except the one exception is for our high school diploma and high school equivalency programs, we had started to use a um, online platform. So for our high school uh, diploma section, we use Admentum. And for our HSC preparation, uh, we use Aztec software. So those programs had been doing that, uh, again, even prior to this application. And we knew that we needed to invest more and, and push more, but really building those digital literacy skills. So the, the true, that was a nudge, the true push to change making us really look past just digital literacy skill and integration was COVID. You know, in March, when we were told all the school sites were shutting down, um, what were we gonna do for our students? It was right at our spring break, having to pivot and think, what could we do for our students? What could we have our teachers do uh, as their tech savvy skills um, were very limited what, what did we do? So we went to an asynchronous situation where we taught our teachers how to use Screencastify to record lessons. We put it up onto a distance learning website um, that housed all of our teachers so students could go in, select it, and watch those videos. Our teachers attempted to email students to keep an interaction or use Remind for those teachers that were using Remind. So we, we saw that, but uh, we knew from that and our teachers found through that it was really hard to to engage students uh, emailing students um, not a lot of response was coming back remind started to drop off in the middle of April 
Um, we weren't able to, again, do any uh, post-testing. So there, there was a lot of struggle with that. So we knew for 2021 that we as a school needed to be different and, and structure ourselves so we can engage our students, you know? And that had to start with how were we going to encourage enrollment? And so we had to move to an online enrollment form. Google Forms became our friend, uh, trying to create that form, uh, put it out on our website so students could uh, register for school uh, or start the enrollment process. And then we even had to then say, okay, what are we gonna do for testing? Uh, as I shared, September test and open back up for the K-12. We were able through executive cabinet approval to have limited testing come in. So we started scheduling testing sessions. So we had students selecting dates and times that they would come in. We'd know those students coming in for contact tracing and having to follow all those procedures. So that was the starting of our, our change and our shift the other part of that was having our teachers learn how to use a live web-based video platform um, for testing. Testing Unified overall is a, a Google district. Um, our students, though, didn't have Google accounts. Our teachers very inexperienced with using Google. So we taught them Google Meet to try and get students to engage with them on. So those are just some of those shifts that happened and made us had to reevaluate what we were going to do and really building our distance learning plan. Um, also, uh, not having Google Classroom available to us and Tustin restricting certain components of access, uh, we went to Google Sites to try and make it a platform where teachers could house information, uh, put up assignments for students, and even if they uh, had some recordings that they wanted to put up, trying to give that one-stop shop for our students to access, gain information that they might have questions on. And the other side of that was helping the office staff be able to say, well, hey, let's go to this teacher website. So that was another new learning component that came up with our teachers. So with that, uh, another quote to talk about change here, all great change uh, were preceded by chaos. So COVID made us feel a little chaotic. It, it was, we're very reactive in our change and instead of being purposeful in our change and what we needed to do. And I think that's where uh, being accepted into DLAC and really starting to go through the process has helped us. Um, so we're not um, having chaos everywhere, but and being reactionary, but trying to be purposeful in our change and, and looking forward to that. So with that, Ideal 101 comes in and really does, it helped us focus on what change did we want, not because we were responding to COVID um, and thinking, oh, we need change, but being purposeful in that change. So really going through the chapters of Ideal 101 and that breakdown of, of what the stage is going to look like, how are we going to recruit, what's screening, what's orientation going to be, uh, really did provide for us a lens to say, hey, let's pay attention to those components. I think we were narrow. Uh, I'm sorry, I know I'm doing it into a screen, but we were very narrowly focused, where Ideal sort of brought it open and said, hey, let's look at all of this. So that way you're purposeful. And um, the survey data that we were completing really helped us through Ideal 101 and then asking teachers questions as well and asking students ask access points to um, technology and those components really helped us. We really hadn't started talking about screening students and orientation of students um, going into the, the, the online platforms and making sure students understood. So that was a, a great thought process for us to really go through. And then just the insight that Destiny would give and provide on each of our components and our proposals uh, really helped us. Uh, we, Laura and I enjoyed the questions, you know, what about this? Or did you think about that? And it just spurred more thought and conversation that we brought back into leadership and in really creating our distance learning plan. So Ideal 101 really was a great focus for us. But the other component of that was um, really saying, where do we want to narrow our goals? I think we could ad address everything. And it sort of feels like we might be addressing everything. But we really, in the leadership team and with um, staff, talked about what is it that we need for our students to look at being successful in a distance learning plan, but also bringing students back onto campus. What is it they need going back to that original idea of their digital literacy skills and access to technology. So as you can see, these are the five areas that we've come up with to focus on for our plan and that's technology access for our learners and staff. Really talking about recruitment. Again, I'm going to acknowledge with you, like I shared earlier, our numbers are significantly down from the year before. So how do we recruit? How do we start making people feel comfortable, whether it's coming back into person 
or being online, how, how do we support that? Going through a screening and orientation process to really be able to say, hey, can we make some recommendations for you compared to just what a CASA score gave us to talk about your ESL level or should you be in an AB class or uh, an ASE class? And then really looking at professional development and support for our staff. Um, we, as COVID hit and what we learned from OTAN, was opening up office hours was an amazing thing that we started to do to provide teachers an opportunity to come in and ask questions. Um, but we really wanna be purposeful and focused in that. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. And then um, instruction and assessment is always there, always an important component to be reflective on and know that we need to continue to build. So what we've accomplished so far in our distance learning plan. So we've purchased new devices for staff. So all of our staff members, um, have a, a Surface Pro that our district adopted. We've uh, used funds to purchase that for our staff members to give them the up-to-date de device to use, accessible in our classrooms, connecting to, to our TV monitors. Uh, we've created an orientation video for students, a, a simple video. Uh, Laura loves Bitmoji, so you see Laura's Bitmoji down there. Uh, just explaining, hey, this is what you're gonna need to understand to be um, successful as a student. And then um, the recruitment side of that, trying to look at using Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to recruit students. We had a Facebook page, but it was sort of stagnant. And I'm gonna be honest, as the leader of our school, uh, a lot of balls in the air, and I, I think needing to know how to delegate that out. So we have worked on that delegation and have started to put that out there. So we're getting some chatter from that, which is always a good thing. And then also looking at when students are coming in, uh, they've completed their online re registration, come in for their scheduled assessment. Uh, we're giving them a digital literacy screener um, that really just asks these four basic questions. What are your skill levels on being able to um, work with apps, uh, send an email, be online, um, just accessing the computer. So that way it helps us uh, to see how we will hopefully in the future be able to provide support, uh, but just give us an understanding. We did ask those questions in our um, enrollment form as well, um, but it's been interesting to see how the answers change when they come in person to answer that. So it really tells us at home, completing the enrollment form that um, there's somebody there with them. You know, I, a great example yesterday in classes, I was talking to a teacher uh, uh, doing co-ops and we're using Google Forms to do some of that collection. And this was an in-person uh, teacher who said, you know, what do I do if the student doesn't have an email? And that's sort of ironic because to enroll, you have to have an email with us so we can send you out um, the uh, a scheduler to set your appointment to come test with us. And so we joked about, hey, that is definitely somebody else who's supporting and, and working with that individual so they can get to that point of learning. So th this is what we've worked on so far. So the other thing to talk about is the uh, the other trainings that we've learned from Dr. Porter, uh, conversations with our coach, Susan uh, Coulter, and, and then just Penny and Netta, your influence, as well as other OTAN uh, conversations that we've had as well. We were able to look at, you know, team building, looking at that, creating a culture of change and handling conflict. You know, if you think about change, uh, it can bring up some um, Def defensive walls to say, I don't know if we can do this and, and trying to bring that through and then developing those communication skills to keep people informed and, and valuing our individual strengths, you know, and, and looking at not only us as the DLAC team members, but we talked about it in leadership and then talking about with our, our, um, our staff as well of how can we delegate some of that work, um, building on the skills that, that our teachers have. So again, that whole point of putting us together, it's a great puzzle that we all come together and, and can uh, create something wonderful, uh, but we've got to build it together. So how we did that. So part of that in the team building is really going back to norms. You know, norms have always been present somewhere, but it, it brought us to back to that point of saying, hey, what do our norms mean? And one of them was really making sure our teachers felt like they had a voice. Um, it, it, it's been pretty amazing for people to feel comfortable enough uh, with the norms being uh, the 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 frame for us to exist in meetings, uh, to really hear those voices. And then really talking about those individual strengths, um, to, uh, just letting teachers share what their comfort level is with certain digital tools, uh, uh, being online itself and how they're engaging their students. It, it's, it's been pretty powerful. And then communication, uh, we have weekly communication that's going out and then handling conflict. You heard me talk about that as well. And then our challenges ahead, 
it's a part-time staff and, and trying to keep people engaged. As you see, Laura's not here. She's had to take on another position somewhere else. Funding for professional development and for technology so we can learn out more components. And then building enrollment. Uh, it, it's a huge component for us. Uh, if you don't have the students, it, it, it's hard to keep things going. And with that, our next steps, we're going to be building an onboarding workshop to build on digital literacy skills from our screeners, as well as from teachers, building a marketing presence. Uh, we're going to start class C testing and then establish a clear distance learning class expectations. What is it that we really want distance learning to be instead of being reactionary? And with that, I close. The secret of change is to focus all your energy not on fighting the old, but on building the new, and that's what we're looking forward to.